All right. Welcome, everyone. We are recording. This is another live recording of the Managing Partners podcast. I'm Kevin Daisy, your host. I'm also the founder of Array Digital. We exist to help law firms grow their practice areas through digital marketing. Uh, today, I got a guest coming out of Miami, Florida, but he also practices around the country and in Hawaii. And uh, we got Jed. Welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on. Thank you very much for having me, Kevin. I appreciate it. Look forward to talking to you. Yeah, yeah. I uh, look forward to hearing your story, your journey. Uh, checked out your bio. Checked out your website. Uh, we got to chat a little bit, you know, before the show here. And you're up to a lot of things. Got a lot of things going on. So I'm excited to kind of dive into those things and and let everyone know what you're up to. So uh, give us, you know, your. I mean, you know, I guess give us a little bit of background on, I guess, the areas of practice you have, and then I really want to get into, you know the journey that you've you've been on to get to where you are today sure so my name is jed um i go by jed short sweet uh i'm <laughs> born in miami raised in miami i went to the university of alabama for college came back to miami went to law school at the university of miami and practiced here in miami for the last 26 years i was very fortunate that uh my father was an attorney so I was a public defender initially, then joined my father to, to back then we did personal injury, um, really anything that came in the door. Over the years, I've developed a specialty in medical malpractice. I do large catastrophic injury cases. I'm different than most firms in that I only have five or six cases. That's all I take. It's all I can mm -hmm. take. So my cases are very large. Unfortunately, the injuries are very significant. Um, usually it's the area of malpractice, although I have trucking cases and auto cases and product cases as well. If I think I can help and the injury warrants my involvement, I don't have paralegals doing all of the work. I don't have, you know, support staff that does everything. It's me. I have one associate, one secretary, and we handle these six cases, like you said, around the country. Um, barred in Miami, I'm barred in Hawaii. And I have an office in Miami and an office in Honolulu, and I work everywhere in between. But clearly, <laughs> I love the beach. Clearly, you've made a good choice. Um, I'm at the beach, but in Virginia, Virginia Beach, so not quite as nice, but uh, that's awesome. So, uh, so uh, you know, interesting kind of place you've got into kind of niching in this. Um, and, you know, you, you mentioned that you just wrote a book, and that is now out, Correct. Correct. Um, I did. Thanks for mentioning it. It's a national bestseller. So oh. it's called How Justice is Served. Uh, so that is my book. And it is literally a manual on how to evaluate a case, prepare a case, and litigate a case. I've never seen a trial book, and I love to read trial books. I love to read strategy books. Um, I love being a trial lawyer, so it's, to me, something I enjoy. And I've never seen a book that takes the attorney, the reader, um, from how to look at a case, to evaluate, to prepare, what to prepare, how to get ready for trial, what to do with trial, how to try a case, and the end. And it's really a journey from beginning to end. Uh, awesome. It's a book about communication and skills and, and how to frame a case, prepare a case, how to objectively prepare the case so that a jury, and since I practice across the country, I've had... Uh, trials in eight states now um they're different juries are different in each state they're different in each locale and you need to be able to communicate with them in a way that's effective and i think my book helps you try to figure that out that's excellent so uh it's kind of like a as you said like a manual like a a guide so can you show the book up again if you don't mind sure uh for everyone watching on video you can check that out if not uh how justice is served you can look that up, and, and I'm sure you can find it. Is it on Amazon and other places as well? Yeah, it's on Amazon. Uh, okay. There's a link um, from my website, kktplaw.com, and you can also find it on uh, Amazon. Okay, excellent. Yeah, wow, that sounds amazing. So anyone watching, listening, sounds like you should definitely check that book out if you're a trial lawyer. Um, and uh, that's very interesting. So um, so give me a little bit. So the firm that you're you know, uh, – you said it's just you and it's you're doing a lot of the work, but your firm consists of uh, how sure. many how many lawyers and staff and practices there uh, practices that you guys cover? All right, so my firm is 14 attorneys. 
It's grown over the last 25 years. Uh, it started 40 years ago. My father and my uncle started this firm. My father did personal injury, and my uncle is a very famous immigration attorney. Um, his name is Ira Kurzban. And over the years we've grown, of the 14 attorneys, me and one associate do personal injury, what I do, the other 12 do immigration. So mm -hmm. people think of us as a large immigration firm, which we are. And we're quite famous in immigration, but it is the, the PI work, as I tell people all the time, we pay for the immigration department to take these giant cases <laughs> to the Supreme Court of America and become famous. Um, there's a joke in my firm between my uncle and I, you know, my uncle's the greatest immigration attorney in the country really is. He also has written a book and it's the actual Bible of immigration law. Oh, wow. Um, and he's one of the finest attorneys in the country. And I tell him all the time, he's the second best attorney in the firm. <laughs> uh, we also have two other partners, John Pratt and Helena Tetzeli. Um, yeah. And we've added recently two new junior partners named Kevin Gregg and Eddie Ramos. Um, they're all immigration attorneys, but that's what we're known for is immigration law and these large scale catastrophic injury cases uh, that I handle uh, with my associate Lauren. Yeah. So that's, that's really cool though. I think how, um, you know, the, the firm is known for that and it's folk, you know, but you kind of have your, you found your own kind of niche, your own way. Um, and, and kind of stand out on your own, which is pretty cool, um, uh, which is unique. It's interesting that you do that. And I'd say everyone, you know, check out look at the website here. It's uh, kktplaw.com. Um, you can kind of see all the areas of practice. You can see the um, the other partners. Um, and is your uncle, you said, right? That's the one. Right. Well My uncle, right. He's one of the partners. Um, he Ira. Uh, co founder Ira Kurzban with Marvin Kurzban um, since it's the Managing Partner Podcast, which I've listened to several episodes that they're excellent. My father was the managing partner for 30 years. He retired about five years ago. About seven, eight years ago, I took over. They voted me in to manage the firm. And so I'm the managing partner of the firm. I run the firm day to day. Um, but of course, I have partners and we, you know, we have partner meetings. So the way our firm does it is we have partner meetings, Monday nights, talk about things going on, what we're doing. Because we're sort of a two-headed um, snake in the, the way the firm is set up, you know, one head yeah. is immigration, one head is personal injury or tort. You know, we talk about resources and what we're going to do in terms of um, managing our caseload, yep. our volume of cases, our staff. You know, we've grown from literally two people, there's now 22 overall employees at the firm. So, you know, over these years we've grown and I think we'll continue to grow. That's excellent. Well, good topic is the next question I was going to ask you is, um, you know, now that this could be two different answers, I would assume, um, you know, with the firm's growth and, and what you're doing and focus on now is what has worked well to get clients now, again, you know, the, you know, personal injury side where you're handling a handful of cases uh, versus immigration, which I assume is quite a bit more. Um, maybe kind of tell us which, you know, how do you get, how are you getting cases for each of those, those areas? Sure. I, I would say, honestly, the immigration firm has maybe 300 cases, right? They're a much more volume part of the firm, whereas I have six cases. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we really focus in on our clients, but our, Belief system is the same, which is if we really service our clients, do a great job, then they will let other clients know about us and they will get us our clients. And that has been our model for 40 years and has worked. Knock on wood, it continues to work. Um, do I do we do some social media? We do social media. Like recently I've hired a social media person to help with social media, Instagram yeah. and LinkedIn and and so that's kind of new, right? We've never done that before, but it's a new world and things change. Um, we have, I think, a terrific website. I actually spent a lot of time. I built our entire website with a web designer and every page on our website is, you know, me putting together how I want our website to look. I'm very nice. particular in the way we present ourselves um, because I think it's important to me that we are not a giant firm with a million clients that make lots of money to pay for more advertisement, to get more clients, to pay for more advertisement. And that's fine. That's a business model. I talk about that in my book a lot. 
It's a business model that's worked for a lot of lawyers. It's not my model. I never wanted to be a businessman. I never wanted to only worry about profit and, and income and how much I can make to buy more TV time or more billboards. I wanted to be an attorney. And I wanted to be an attorney that affected change in society. Um, and it's the same belief of my uncle and my partners, John Helena, which is, you know, a lot of our fights, we know we can't make money on these fights. Um, you know, whether it's me taking a pro bono case for someone that I just want to effectuate change in the hospital system or the immigration department right now is a case going up to the Supreme Court of America um, on a really interesting mm -hmm. immigration issue. And so effectuating change is what we've always been about, servicing our clients, making sure they know that for me, their story has been told. They've been destroyed. They've physically been destroyed, mentally been destroyed, financially been destroyed. No one helps them. The government doesn't help these people. In fact, all the laws in the state of Florida are geared to hurt these people even more and only protect large insurance companies. That is the premise of Florida of legislation, the whole oh. premise of it. Hurt people, help giant insurance companies. With that being said, no one can really help them if they don't put everything they have into it. And taking a bunch of cases to settle for a little bit of money and then brag about it is not what I've ever been about. I'm here to really go after them and make change. And my clients love that they know someone's fighting to tell their story because that's what they want. They want justice. So I named my book, How Justice is Served. It doesn't have to be criminal justice. There's civil justice. Sure. I was hurt. It wasn't my fault. Someone else did it. They should have followed these simple rules not to hurt me or there were no rules even created to protect me. And I want my story told. I want the system to be better. So the next person doesn't suffer what I've suffered from. And I feel that's my obligation to them. I love it, man. I, I really do. I think, um, yeah, and I agree with you. And I think, I, honestly, you know, I talk, I get to talk to a lot of amazing people, managing partners, attorneys, most of which want to be attorneys and wanted to be attorneys, uh, you know, not uh, a business owner, an entrepreneur, or whatever you want to say. Uh, they weren't taught that usually. It's, it's something they just kind of had to get into. And, um, and so it's, it's nice to hear, honestly, a consistent message across the board for the majority that the, you know, these attorneys want to help people and they want to yeah. change lives. And, um, you know, that's, that's, you know, most of our audience, I would say, and, and honestly, my clientele, um, is not, not the ambulance chasers and crazy advertisers and, you know, yelling on TV and stuff, you know, that's just not, not the kind of folks that we work with, but. Uh, everyone we do and have on the show has a mission. They have goals. Um, you know, they have integrity. They they want to have their clients taken care of. So, so I'm glad you shared that. That's um, and that's going to lead to that's going to lead to work. That's going to lead to uh, more good clients for you. So, so I, I think the model. I think the model. Yeah, tried and tried, tested and and uh, will work forever. So, um, okay, excellent. I love that. Um, and you mentioned you are doing some stuff and digital stuff, and that's kind of what we do. But so you're you're investing some some effort in that. I've seen your website. Um, I assume like SEO and things like that are something you guys have dabbled in too, based on what I see. Sure. Um, so, what are some of the plans really uh, outside of that uh, for the medical malpractice stuff? The the big cases, like what what has really worked well? I mean, to get, is that all referral based? Is it something that you kind of fell into and you kind of just got a good handle on it and you got people referring you? Like what is, how are you getting those, those larger cases? All right. So it's funny you say how I fell into it. There's truth to that. <laughs> I'm just about assuming, degree. sorry. <laughs> no, there's truth to that to a degree. So I, um, you know, I have my friends that I grew up with. I have my friends from law school. I have attorneys that do different areas of practice and you know they'll refer cases to me if it's medical malpractice i'll refer case to them if it's criminal or family law um because i don't do that so there's some of that there's my clients that bring me cases and then in the area of medical malpractice i, I had a case with a uh, a mexican long distance truck driver that had kidney failure no one diagnosed him no one was treating him hmm. the case to me seemed 
outrageous he wasn't getting help. And when he got to me, he was already on dialysis trying to get a kidney transplant or he was going to die. And I couldn't understand how this man that was healthy one day, the next day they said, you need dialysis. And so I took the time to look into the case. And this case had been rejected by like three other law firms. I looked into the case and it's because no one told him his kidneys were failing for three or four years as he did his yearly physicals for the DOT. No one told him. And mm. so they let his kidneys fail. So I took this case to trial. I got a enormous verdict at the time and was very happy. The client was, you know, thanking me. I was able to make his life a little more bearable because he could afford to live. He could afford the kidney transplant, which led to another case in kidney failure that was not diagnosed, which then led to a case in Hawaii where the lawyer out there said, "I've my clients read about these kidney cases of yours. I don't know anything about kidney cases. Would you help me with this case? And so I took a wow. case on in Hawaii. I was admitted pro hoc vice, I mean, a guest of the state. And that led to a case out there, which led to a second and a third case in Hawaii. And it's a long story, but after the judge sort of threatened to not let me try my third case out there, I got annoyed and I took the bar in Hawaii and passed the bar, got <laughs> licensed. The law firm I was working with asked me to be their tort partner out there. So I have an office out there, but that led to a case in South Carolina. And then I had one in two of them in Arizona. And I have one going on right now currently in North Dakota. Plus I have in Florida. Plus I've done cases in Washington State for kidney disease. So now I have these local lawyers, some of which have hired me to help them. And some of which the clients come to me and I've hired the local lawyer to be my local attorney in that jurisdiction. And so they found other kidney cases and they refer kidney cases to me because they're very happy with the quality of work we've done, the clientele, and they know that they can be part of a larger case. So hmm. that's sort of, I feel a little bit, <laughs> not that I intended to have a national practice. I did not, but the way it happened I have a national practice in failure to diagnose kidney disease, and I try these cases around the country. And quite frankly, I love going to these jurisdictions and meeting different attorneys, meeting different juries, seeing how I can communicate with them because an Arizona jury is very different than a South Miami jury, um, which is very different than a jury in Hawaii or South Carolina. And so it's it's a challenge, but one that I love. And, you know, again... So been successful, thank God. So it's been a, it's been a good journey. That's excellent, man. And so um, that's very interesting as well. I guess for me, you know, being a little ignorant, uh, not knowing, um, I guess explain, you know, how you're going to these other states. Is, is this more at a federal level or, you know, how how's that all, that whole process work where you're going to, you know, sure. take these cases in other states without being barred in those, those states? Sure. So. I originally I'm a, a barred Florida attorney. Uh, although now I'm also a barred Hawaii attorney, but essentially I'll get this case, you know, I'm working on now in North Dakota. The client comes to me, asks me to help him. I look at the case. He clearly has been malpracticed on. He clearly had kidney disease for years and they just ignored it. Hmm. So I then will, in this case, it was me that found local counsel, which would be a North Dakota attorney and say, I have this case. I'd like to work with you. Will you help me? One, help me learn the North Dakota rules of civil procedure, which I certainly am not an expert on. <laughs> um, and to be allowed to practice in other states, they have to petition the court. It's called a motion for pro hoc vice, meaning guest of the state. Okay. And in this motion for pro hoc vice, I have to prove I'm in good standing in my state. I've never been suspended or in trouble. And I have specialized knowledge that would help that state get better at the area that I'm bringing to that state. And as an expert, so to speak, in kidney disease, I file my petition for pro hoc vice, and I've never had a judge deny it so wow. far. Uh, except one in Hawaii that gave me a hard time, which, as I said, led <laughs> to be taking the bar out there. So hopefully I don't have any problems again, because I don't know if I want to take another bar. It's, it was very taxing taking a bar 25 years after I had graduated <laughs> from law school. I'll never know. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the, you went around the, the judge on that one, right? So, okay, that, that helps me a lot. But um, I, I think it's just really cool. Um, again, I want, 
we wouldn't say fell into, but you know, you never know where you're going to go and your journey, where your journey is going to take you. But um, you've ended up in a, in a place that you uh, are passionate about and that you're good at. Right. So um, I think that's pretty amazing that uh, that's what you've been able to do. Um, I would assume, and again, I'm just a digital, I'm a digital marketing kind of guy. So I, I, I got to assume these people are probably searching for help, right? Online. Correct. And they probably come across articles or uh, your website, probably talking about some of these cases because it's so specific yeah. um, that they're probably, th they probably can't find much help out there. And then I also write up. articles about it. So there's some publications of things I've written about, but okay. you're right. A lot of it's my website. Uh, a little bit of it is, you know, the new world of social media and digital marketing, which I know you do. And so a lot of this is somewhat word of mouth, somewhat digital search, uh, maybe some literature search or case results search. Yep. And how the conglomerate of all works till they finally contact me. It's really hard to trace. A lot of people can't actually trace exactly where their first contact was. Yeah. But I'm different than most law firms also that. I take every call that comes into my office. I don't have a screening person. I don't have someone that you know, screens my calls before they get to me. If I'm out of the office because I'm in trial, my assistant will take a message. But otherwise, I'm here. I take every call. I screen every call. I talk to every person. And even though I don't take most cases, I tell people I take one out of 100 cases I get. Yeah. The other 99 cases I don't take. But because they're talking to me, the partner and a professional and answer their questions. I take the time to really discuss it with them. I've had, I can't even tell you hundreds, maybe not hundreds, but scores of cases that have come from someone's case who I rejected. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, and, and Jed even gave me the time of day to talk to, to me today. So this guy is an open book. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I, I love that. And, um, and yeah, when you're taking that few cases, you're going to talk to a lot of people that you probably cannot help. There's probably a majority, like you said, is you can't help, but you can help them some way, point them in the right direction. Um, you know, and I would like to say that we do that too. And actually, I just got off the phone just a few minutes ago. Um, we only work with law firms. And I had a company reach out um, in Florida, actually, um, that they offer uh, assistance for families. Um, to avoid any type of legal or litigation, but they're not a law firm. So they offer more of like programs and, and, and things like that. And so uh, I said, are, are, it's hard to tell, are you are a law firm? I couldn't really tell exactly because it looked like they just kind of had a brand that looked, we don't want to look like a law firm, but we are a law firm. Um, but this is like, no, we're, we're not a law firm. And I said, well, you know, I apologize, but we, you know, we don't, you know, work with anyone that's not a law firm. Um, but guess what? I have tons of people I know that I can refer you to and here's what I would do and what kind of money you're looking to spend and, you know, point them in the right direction. So uh, you just got to be able to say no to the, the things that aren't a fit and then give a little free consultation or point them in the right direction. and Be professional, and be helpful. There's no skin off your nose to try to help people, even if you can't help them. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, the great majority of cases I reject because Florida is so bad when it comes to the laws to helping people that I, you know, I give them names and numbers and say, here's your congressman, here's your senator, here's the governor, write a letter, make a phone call. You can effectuate change in the legislature if enough people like you write letters and call. And then I get these, you know, wonderful thank you notes. Thank you so much. I wrote, congressman wrote me back. I appreciate oh, wow. you helping me. And that's super cool. And that's a, it's a nice thing to know, even though you can't really help them, you're still helping them the ways you can. I love it. Um, so, uh, Jeb, what's you know what's on the radar? You're managing the firm. Um, what are you know some of the plans that you see in the next couple of years? Uh, any new initiatives, plans for growth? What you know? What are you thinking about right now? Well, honestly, uh, COVID really kind of changed a lot of things in, in everyone's world. Uh, I'm no exception. I had a lot of trials that were um, shut down because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So I'm now facing for the first time in my career kind of a backlog of trials. So you know, I'm, I'm going to hire another associate. We're going to grow because we're going to need more help trying cases. Um, so in terms of growth, another associate, 
uh, with another associate. I may or may not need another assistant that will lead to growth. The immigration department, not only did COVID affect it, but the prior administration trying to end all immigration in America was complicated. And we did a lot of federal litigation. You know, the, it seems crazy to say, you know, if you're Muslim, you can't come to America. I mean, that's just a, a crazy thing to say and do. So there was a lot of federal litigation that we did on behalf of groups of people that entire swath yeah. groups of people were cut out of immigration because someone doesn't like that group, which is literally anti-American. I don't point of America is we take this giant conglomerate of people and we make this melting pot and have this wonderful world we create out of all these different societies and beliefs and systems that we're able to incorporate into an American system. And so to do the opposite of that seems outrageous. So we were involved in a, a lot of litigation in the immigration department because it's so anti-American. It's so despicable in its form to say groups of people are not worthy of America. Now, there may be a person who's a bad person, and we would all sure. agree there are bad people we don't want in America. But a group as a whole is outrageous. Yeah, so we've done a lot of litigation. We've grown some in this litigation. Now that immigration is coming back, that's going to change the future of that section of our firm in the medical malpractice section or, or tort section, personal injury. A lot of it's going to, we're working currently on, not only we've been writing articles and lecturing around the state, but we're involved in a few political races to try to change the political landscape of Florida so that okay. victims, injured victims, people, people like you, people like me, get some protection. Because I'll be right important now, there is zero protection for people. It's all for these giant companies that have millions and millions and millions of dollars of profit that are pouring money into these races to get disgusting people to write laws that are even more disgusting and just destroy people's lives. It's just not okay. So our growth is going to be from the legal perspective of growing so we can take trials, you know, and, and make sure our trials don't get delayed and we can move forward. But we're also becoming a little more active legislatively because I mean, it's terrible to see what's happening to the state of Florida and to people's rights, victims' rights. It's really disgusting. When is Jed running for office? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Jed, uh, J Locally, I, like, at least. I do. I, you know, I like helping people and sitting in a room with a bunch of politically motivated people based on the monies they're paid by these interest groups would be something I would have a very tough time, as you could tell, keeping my mouth shut. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's anytime soon. Maybe at some point I'll learn to, uh, not take it so personal, but for now it seems very personal to me. And I like getting into court because juries, I tell people all the time, our, our civil system, it's not great. It needs a lot of work. It's got a lot of problems, but it's the best in the world by a lot. And juries do the right thing. They want to do the right thing. If you talk to them and you educate them, they really want the system to work. And eight out of 10 times, juries are on the money. One out of 10, they're too low. One out of 10, they're too high. Eight out of 10, juries are on the money. And I like talking to juries because if you talk to them and teach them and educate them, they want to do the right thing. Legislature does not want to do the right thing. They're <laughs> there for their motivated you know, purpose of how can I make money? Who's going to pay me to say what? And that is not how juries believe. That's why I love juries. Well, yeah, that's a good, uh, good point you said there. I think um, it's got a lot of problems, but it's the best in the world. You know, but it doesn't mean we don't have a lot of work to do. So exactly, um, yeah. well said. So, well, I think you said it first. So, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, all right, we both said it well. I'll take that. But, um, well, yeah. So, yeah, I appreciate you sharing those, uh, you know, those views and and kind of your position and and what things are going on. Um, have you done like a lot, you know, with COVID, um, just kind of change the subject a little bit. Um, have you done a lot of traveling? Have you done, uh, have stuff going to like Zoom trials in other states or do you have to physically be there? So a lot of things have moved to Zoom, which 
Like most older attorneys, I was against initially, but now I see the benefit of a lot of it. I still like personal connection. I don't think I ever want to do a Zoom trial because I want to talk yeah. to the jury and look in their eye. And, you yeah. know, I want them to feel the piece of paper I'm going to hand them, which shows the medical record that says, you know, we tested, but then they actually never tested. Um, so I think there's still a need for in-person connection. I've heard that from a lot of trial lawyers, lawyers. They have an advantage by being in front of people yeah, versus over Zoom. I think Zoom is very effective for a lot of maybe one-on-one -on -one hearings or one-on-one -on -one depositions. So I've been doing a lot of Zoom. Um, actually, the book came about because when COVID first started and we were really shut down, the courts were shut down. There was really nothing I could do as a trial attorney. Other law firms that have maybe a larger volume practice and do a little more, you know, auto accident work and still move things, cases some through. But for me, in my large cases, I need trial to move forward. Mm. And so I really was shut down for a good year, which uh, I sat in my office for about a, a week, crying <laughs> a little, figuring out what to do, playing a lot of Angry Birds on my cell phone, thinking there has to be something better than this. And uh, that was the genesis of why I wrote my book. I decided to take all 26 years of my trial experience, and I was talking to my wife about it. And my wife said, instead of bemoaning, just <laughs> write your book. Start writing. So I put it down, and I spent a year during COVID to write this book. And that's how the book came about. So I'm very that's proud awesome. of it because of the, the, the knowledge I think that's in it, I think. It'll be very helpful to any attorney that tries cases. And it'll be helpful to anyone that really wants to communicate with other people outside of the world of attorneys. Um, but, you know, I feel I used my time well in sort of taking everything I had, all my notes, all of the different little lessons I've learned over the years. Um, the book started because I have a fat three-wing binder where I take all these little notes over the years of things I saw or I liked or I read about, and I'd scribble them down, and I'd stick them in this binder. And so I turned my three-ring binder of assorted notes and theories and ideas and turned it into the book with, thank God, the help of an editor because it's, it's a little scattered <laughs> to start with. They had to focus me in a little, but no, I think it's great. That's awesome. Um, well, I, I think it's just great that, you know, you, you know during downtime, COVID, you – could have just gone and sat on the beach, right, and done nothing. Um, but you decided that you're like, I'm, this is my opportunity to put put some things on paper. So, um, yeah, you got to do what you got to do. You got to keep moving. Uh, but you're ready to produce that book. So, what, can you hold the book up again if you have it? Um, so, yeah, how justice is served uh, by Jed Kurzban. Uh, that's awesome. That kind of gives a little idea of what the book is really about. So if you see it on Amazon, you should be able to check it out or go to my website. And, um, you know, like the book says, it's uh, it's about evaluation, preparation, and litigation. And so it takes you through all three of those steps. So it's divided into like 13 chapters into three sections. That's awesome. It's you just easy, easy to, to consume. So you make it easy for someone reading it to consume and, and actually use it. Which, which is great. So I think it's a huge tip for everyone right there. If you're if you're going to trial, check out his book. Uh, I'm sure it's amazing. Um, you go to his website. It's uh, kktplaw.com. Uh, it's on the screen here as well. Um, I really have had a, a lot of great attorneys on here um, this year that are also authors. They've published some books. Not all of them, but there's been a handful. I feel like we should like add maybe a, a book club to the newsletter that we're putting out or something like that. Yeah, you know, I always try to find other books that I find of interest. I have a, a library in the back of my office, which has I don't know, 50, 60 books that over the years I've bought and read. And, um, you know, you, I tell people, if you read this book and you get four or five things out of the book, it's a great book. It's you know, worth every dollar, right? You ideas out of it, but you get four or five good ideas. That was a good book. Absolutely. hundred percent. So, For me, if I get one thing I can apply to my business or my life, then, you know, it's, it's a great book and you put it back on the shelf, probably read it again and maybe find another thing later. But, um, sure. yeah, I, I have a goal to read two a month, um, at least wow. good for you. or, or 24 good a year. Goal. And yeah, well, it, yeah, I've never been a big reader and, uh, you know, I, 
you know, I wasn't a, a, a big, I didn't go to law school. I didn't do all that big stuff. I was, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I said I went into business for myself, but uh, so I've had over the years to start, you know, I, I have to read, I have to, you know, get this content in. So yeah, two a month for me, it's about most I can do right now. But then you hear like, oh, the top CEOs in the country read 60 books a year. Like, well, they must have yeah, more time than know, me. Like, it's hard to find time sometimes, but yeah, I try to always be reading. I, uh, I always have a book on my shelf that I'm working through and, um, you know, it, it, some days I'm able to read more, some days less, but, you know, I believe in consistently reading. And if you think you know everything, you're fooling yourself. So there's yeah. always people there that know more and different. And I love to learn. Always have. Well, I love it. And I think um, I think what you're doing, too, with like taking notes and you know writing stuff, stuff down that you've picked up. Um, obviously, the three ring binder, right, that came back to to assist you. And I think, um, you know, a lot of times we take stuff in or you go to a conference or you read a book, you know, like, oh, that was a nice book. And I hear people say that all the time. And like, what are you going to do with what you, you pulled out of it? What are you, you going to apply it? Are you going to do something with it? And so I, I feel like a lot of times me and most people I talk to, you can waste a lot of effort and time and then not apply it. And, uh, and, and you know, no, that's a good point. You know, I go to a lot of conferences. I lecture a lot as well, but I'm also an attendee, you know, and I'll lecture on my portion and then I'll be an attendee. And again, if I hear one or two or three things, you know, I'll take a note, I'll stick it in my pocket, I'll bring it back to the office and I'll have my assistant type it out for me and then I'll stick it in my binder. Yeah. And so that's, that's helped me. Um, although the, the tips today are supposed to be coming from Jeb, which they have been coming in hot. So, but one tip for me, I think is I try to, when I go to something like that or event or conference, I say, I'm here to get something out of this because I invested in time and money. Uh, I have to leave this with something with that in mind. What am I getting out of it? Am I learning something? Am I meeting someone? You know, you're, you're there for a purpose. And I think, you know, some people just float around sometimes. So <laughs> whether I lecture on my book or lecture on a specific topic. So well, I, I'll do web webcasts as well. Awesome. To me, when I attend, if I enjoy myself and I learned a couple of things, it's been terrifically successful. And so I always try to make people enjoy what they've heard. And if they get one or two things out of it, then they should feel it's been successful. And I, I feel it's been successful. And I'm so, sure. you know, I have, I have a lot of war stories. My book has a bunch of really good war stories in it as well. Some are very entertaining. Some are <laughs> beyond belief. You know, you know, truth is better than fiction, as they say. And a lot of my cases prove that. So there's been a lot that, you know, I've learned over the years. And, and as you get older, you process information differently. And so you do, you revisit some of those books. Or for me, I revisit my third ring binder. And I say, you know, I kind of <laughs> like this. I, I haven't talked about this in a while in trial. I'm going to incorporate this. And uh, I, I just think it's, it's part of the evolution of learning and being a better attorney to better help your client, better service them in terms of their quest for justice, tell their story and hopefully effectuate change. Well, I love it, man. I appreciate you sharing your story today and, and what you've learned and about your book. Um, I would say definitely, if you're listening, uh, check out uh, Jed's book. Um, it looks amazing. Um, but uh, check that out. We'll post some stuff about that as well. And then also, uh, this episode will be up here soon on our website, ArrayLaw.com, forward slash podcast. Uh, Jed, we'll also have this edited um, in the queue to get up on the podcast version, which will be available everyone on uh, Spotify, Google, Apple, and every other platform av available too. Um, but this episode will be up soon. Jeb will let you know when this is up. Great. Um, and uh, if you need any assistance from us, digital marketing, driving leads, marketing for uh, your firm. That's what we do. Everything down to just managing the website um, Jed's passionate about his website, put a lot of energy into it. If you need help doing that same thing and managing it, that's what we do. So reach out to us if we can help. And again, if it's just to have questions, like I have people reach out all the time. Um, and just like Jed here, um, if I can't help, I will help somehow, whether or not you hire us or pay us to do something. Um, it doesn't matter. So happy to help. If you've got any questions, reach out. Jed, uh, best way for people to reach out and connect with you if they have questions. Sure. Um, my email, 
which is jed at kktplaw.com. It's also on my website. Okay. Or you can call my office at 305-444-0060. I really do pick the phone up and talk to everyone. So people are always amazed. I'm like, is it really you? And it's really, I'm, I'm talking to you. Yes. What can I do to help? And how are you? So call me, email me is always great. I travel for trial a lot. So I'm always on my email. Uh, so my website is kktplaw.com. And I'm Jed at kktplaw.com. And that's really a great way to get a hold of me. Well, Jed, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, you're approachable and open and, and out there to help people. So I appreciate your service. And um, I'm sure you've done a lot for um, not just your clients, but Florida uh, in general and your surrounding community. So, again, appreciate what you're doing. Thanks for coming on and sharing that today with us. And uh, anything else to add? If not, we'll, we'll wrap it up. Thank you, Kevin. It's been terrific. I appreciate it. This podcast, you know, I think it's a wave of the future and I'm excited to be a part of it. So, Kevin, thank you for the opportunity. Yes, sir. Again, thank you for taking the time to uh, share this with, with us and the audience and uh, everyone else. We'll see you later. Jed, I'll talk to you soon. You can stay on with me. We'll talk backstage. Everyone All else right. have a great day.